the Khmer Empire. The Khmer Empire was created in 802 when the Khmer people were unified by Jayavaraman II. It reached its peak under Suryavaraman I and Suravaraman II. Around 400, the Khmer had created a state called Jenla, which was the strongest around 700 under Jayavaraman I. Previously Hindu, the Khmer adopted Buddhism during this time. Chinla declined, and after a brief occupation by the Javanese, a new Khmer state was created in 802 by Raja Jayavaraman II. He was a god king, or Diavaraja, like the Tibetan Dalai Lama today. He ruled from a city called Angkor Thom near the lake called uh, Tunle Sap. The Khmers wrote on books, on paper, palm leaves, and vellum. Fire, rot, and termites have long since destroyed them, but it's possible to learn about the Khmers from Chinese histories and from the many carvings in the ruins of the Angkor Thom Great City and the Angkor Wat Great Temple nearby. The building of the Angkor Thom, originally called the uh, Yasodharapura, was started just before 900. The richly decorated temple complex of the Angkor Wat was built between uh, 1113 and 1150. The Khmer armies, which may have included hundreds of war elephants, fought many battles and conquered the surrounding lands, including Thailand and Champa, which is southern Vietnam. The empire reached its peak around 1010 and 1150 under Suryavaraman I and Suryavaraman II. During the 1200s, the people grew tired of serving the uh, Devarajas through forced labor, and Khmer life began to break down. In 1444, invading Thai armies forced the Khmer to abandon Angkor. From then on, Cambodia was dominated by the Thai kingdom of Siam. Khmer Daily Life The Khmer were builders, crafts workers, fishermen, farmers, and warriors. Many lived in houses perched on stilts around the Tone Sap. Their main food was rice, and their special irrigation systems produced three crops a year. The kings were still Hindus, but most of the population was Buddhist. They held elaborate religious ceremonies in connection with the seasons of the year. They traded with India and Java, and also with China, bartering spices and rhinoceros horn for porcelain and lacquerware. Uh, the royal women of the court wore skirts, leaving the upper part of the body bare. Uh, they were encouraged to study law, astrology, and languages. Men only wore a loose loin covering. <laughs>